With this year's Gulf Food Manufacturing in Dubai, anticipating record crowds of 40,000 across its three days. We're expecting the show to be something special this time around, with developments across equipment, systems and ingredients that are making their mark on the region. So we catch up with show director Mark Napier to get the lowdown on this year's event taking place alongside sister show ISM Middle East. Thanks, Neil, and nice to see you again. It's um, look, th this is going to be an amazing show, a absolutely amazing show. Um, there's been so much change in the market, and Dubai has been such a fabulous place from which to operate during those difficult times of the pandemic. Uh, there is a huge pent up demand to attend physical events, and uh, we've also seen well, we're also touching an industry that. Uh, uh, are seeing huge opportunity in the region. Uh, when there's a lot of change in the market, these are the conditions where one has to engage with the marketplace. And our show is overall 40% um, bigger than last year, which was a record-breaking edition already. So um, we're going to see our biggest Gulf food manufacturing yet. And I'm sure as... Um, manufacturers look to solve these enormous challenges that they have. I mean, everywhere one looks, one sees price pressures, infl inflationary pressures, being tightening consumer demand. I mean, how, how one deals with this as a manufacturer has always been difficult, but uh, in, in these times, I mean, one, one really does have, it does test the metal of the very best businesses. And so we see many suppliers coming new to the show for the first time to explore new opportunity. They're not, they're not finding in their domestic market, but also there hasn't really been a, a global gathering of the food and beverage manufacturing industry of this scale since actually our last edition. So um, we've been enormously busy trying to keep up with the exhibitor demand. We've been enormously busy uh, uh, and producing a, a fabulous conference program that will um, enable the market to come and debate and discuss some of these challenges and find some real outcomes. But we're also seeing a lot of investment in industry in the region, looking at new plant, looking at new innovation, looking at new uh, consumer markets. And of course, we're very lucky here in that we touch some 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 areas where uh, there is the uh, f fastest population growth in economies are, uh, are, are are very robust and doing very well thank you very much so yeah busy times for all excellent i'm glad to hear that's the case so just putting this into context with regard to last year's show which was um, a really special one sadly was unable to attend due to circumstances but a big year regarding the dubai the 2020 expo there so how did that combine in terms of making that edition special? Well, it, 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 I mean, it certainly, it, it certainly put Dubai on the map, didn't it? As, uh, as if it needed putting on the map any more than it was. But um, I, I'll tell you what I, I found interesting about the uh, alignment with the Expo is it was an exhibition on a truly global scale. And I think the global partnerships that were made at ministerial level and country to country is one of those things that I think we will all benefit from. Obviously, we've seen a lot of change around the world, partly as a result of the pandemic, partly um, because of the um, difficult situation in Eastern Europe partly because of uh, continuing lockdown in some parts of, uh, of Asia. Um, for countries to get together and form and bind those trade partnerships together, I, I, I think was much needed. Because I think the worry for all of us in trade and export markets is that countries were starting to become far more insular in their outlook. And I think those global trade agreements and deep partnerships that have been made as a result of the expo and then um, executed at uh, uh, a more of a tactical level 
at trade shows such as Gulf Food and Gulf Food Manufacturing in ISM Middle East have been enormously reassuring. Trade, trade is, is hugely important, but the relationships that go with, I think, add to all. And we've seen the difficulties uh, uh, as countries have started to restrict exports of you know, major commodity ingredients, grains, oils, fertilizer, and the impact that that has had on manufacturing industry has been immense. And it's been reshaping the trade agenda, right? Absolutely. And on that note, how concerned are you by those kind of levels of those tests that now are befalling industry in terms of logistics, the increased prices of uh, trade and shortage of components that are impacting on equipment manufacturers and also energy prices as well? Yeah, it seems every which way you, you, you look, right? The, your cost of production is increasing. Your commodity ingredients increasing. Energy prices are heading in, 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 in one direction, it seems. Consumer inflation is sort of changing. But look, uh, things aren't always negative, right? There, there, there are still positives to draw from, from this. Firstly, you know, it, it, makes poor, it makes people more open to trade when traditional supply routes have changed. Okay, so this creates massive new opportunity for trade and dialogue. I think that's important. I think um, look, the confectionery and snacking industry historically has always, has always fared better than most during tough times. You know, it might have been that, um, you know, a, a luxurious treat was, 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 was taking the missus out for, a, you know, a, a, a nice dinner uh, every Friday, right? Uh, maybe our definition of luxury now is, you know, um, you know, a delicious chocolate product. Uh, you know, something that makes us feel better and something that is comfortable. So, you know, certainly, you know, the, the pattern of demand and consumption has changed, and yet we're having to balance that with some of those things that have become far more important to. Uh, the consumer uh, uh, over recent years in terms of what they eat, the provenance of what they eat and what they consume, the impact further up on the supply chain. And uh, I, I think it's important for industry to continue to look at, um, look as far down the supply chain as one can and look at perhaps less privileged uh, 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 nations that are finding it especially uh, difficult and uh, of course, that's the, that might mean the cocoa farmers, right? The treatment of West African farmers in particular is front and centre of the confectionery agenda at the moment, and, and rightly so, has been for a long time, but it's just driving those impacts enough to raise their farmer income. That's what it revolves around. If they can get the incomes up, then um, that is the key to it, I think. So there is an education programme that's a strong part of Gold food. Uh, is that a topic that's going to appear as far as you're aware this year? Absolutely. We've got a big focus on Africa this year. In fact, I was talking about those country partnerships that have been cemented uh, during Expo and during previous editions of, uh, of Gold Food and our, our industry events here. And, and I know that many of our, uh, um, of our leadership and, 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 uh, trade and agricultural industry leaders have spent a lot of time in, in Africa cementing those partnerships and making sure that uh, those supply rate chains are as robust as they possibly can. It's all very well producing, but one needs to find a market and one, one needs the infrastructure. There's been a lot of investment in infrastructure led by this part of the world in particular. In, in, and, and I think that will only benefit um, the farmer, but it will also benefit manufacturing industry and uh, and the wider consumer. Sure, sure. So, is there going to be a sort of overarching theme to this year's event? Uh, look, uh, uh, for, for me, right, manufacturing industry has always been that they've, they've always been pretty smart cookies. 
right? They, they've always dealt with it. They're the wealth creating part of any economy. Uh, and I think what keeps them at the forefront is that focus on innovation, right? That focus on innovation. Innovation and will provide the inspiration. We'll have 1,600 exhibiting companies across the entire 20 hall complex here at the Trade Center. We're projecting over 40,000 visiting attendees. And um, these, are, these are huge numbers to be coming to a trade fair. I think it'll probably be the single biggest um, um, trade show convention. And coming at a, at a point in time where building trade, building new sales and export markets, building new supply chain, building new supply routes, looking at dealing with these pricing uh, challenges, and commodity uh, uh, restrictions that have been around. I think this is hugely important. So, you know, the two things that sit above all else, I think innovation, what's new, and who's uh, from from our sector's perspective, regards to confectionery and snacks and bakery that we cover as well. Are you hopeful that there will be some strong innovation pipelines coming through that will be on show for people? Well, we're already seeing that uh, the newcomers area startups. We're seeing massive focus on um, on the free froms. We're seeing massive focus on plant based. Um, uh, healthy eating, healthy snacking. You know, these have been trends that have been around, but just the volume of, of new business and new product coming to market at the moment is inspirational. And to take these difficult times uh, uh, and, and then come out with so many innovative ranges and product with so many companies entering this space, and even the major brands have got huge huge focus on these themes as well, which we're seeing replicated in the show. And of course, one does that, one needs the equipment and the machinery to make all this happen too. So we're seeing huge investment in regional manufacturing industry here. And, uh, you know, I think that's only to be applauded. Very glad to hear it, Mark. That's excellent news. And just coming on to your sister event there with the ISM Middle East, as it's now being rebranded, how significant is that in your eyes to the overall success of the event? Uh, I, I, you know, in, in a way, it's always been ISM, but just not called that. Uh, right? Now we call it what it is. It's ISM. It's, uh, it, it's had huge recognition as a brand. It's um, certainly, uh, in terms of the global portfolio of confectionery events, uh, you know, it's been rather, it, it's helped elevate the brand. And we've seen that reflected in terms of the number of exhibiting companies and the growth that we've had here in exhib exhibition participation and a you know, much bigger presence from Switzerland and the UK than we've seen in the past. Many new startups that perhaps uh, would, it, we wouldn't have had that airplay now seeing that there is a market opportunity here that uh, they should really be a bit a part of. And uh, that, that, that ISM Global Network has uh, certainly benefited the event and, um, and the numbers that we're starting to see come through. So uh, all for it. Uh, just, just wish we'd done it a long time ago. Um, on your own role as director of the show here, uh, what is an average working week like for you? And what are your biggest challenges, would you say? Oh, uh, yeah. um, uh, uh, you know, no week's the same, really. And I, I, and I think that's one of the things that I've always loved about the events industry is the, the range and variety of people that one meets. Right, from different markets at every level. And, and, you know, that one day we could be dealing with a contractor team that are building events. The next minute we can be talking uh, to CEOs of uh, you know, multinational businesses to trade and ambassadors and uh, minister, ministerial staff. So, you know, it, it's the range and variety, but uh, the one, and certainly you know, being here where I think, Two to 200 nationalities reside, 
you know, you're learning something new every day and keeping that sort of cultural awareness is is quite inspiring. Yeah. Yes. But this year's event, uh, for those that may not have been before, uh, what could you say to encourage them that's going to be special about this year's show to, to get them along to Dubai? You'll see the global market and global solutions in one place at one time. You'll get to see it in three days. You'll get to meet with new suppliers. You'll see the latest trends and in innovations replicated on the floor of the show. You'll talk to some of the brightest brains in the business. You'll get inspiration for your company and how you will tackle similar challenges. And by goodness, you'll do it in a fabulous place that's a lot of fun in one of the safest markets that I've ever come across. And, uh, you know, uh, you'll, you, you know, when business is a pleasure, Dubai is a place that makes business a pleasure. It's a pleasure to do business. And we look forward to welcoming all of our guests from around the world. It's 8th to 10th and